Let me note, I am a Reformed Baptist Christian. This review is a reflection of the beliefs we as Christians know to be true, and while not intended to be harmful or condemning, we ultimately serve a truth that is greater in our God that does cause division. Truth does that. But let me preface by saying my beliefs do not hinder me from loving people as Jesus did, I try my best, despite sin and praying for them along the way. So this may not be the review for you with that disclaimer, but I welcome all to it and encourage you to remain. Let's get into it. As a Christian, I was a bit skeptical going in. I usually am with these kinds of movies, despite not knowing much of the historical context outside of who Greg Laurie is. And it's actually really good, despite some problems when compared to real life. So let me say that this film tackles a lot of complex issues, from hippie culture, drug addiction, loving people, judgmental Christians, abuse of power, spectacle preaching, and more. I was pretty shocked, honestly, at what it was willing to showcase and even condemn without being too definitive on the spiritual gifts and stuff. They skirt the line, but they still kind of condemn the abuse of it. From this, there's a sense of maturity that permeates the tone of the film, which often can be cringeworthy in Christian media. I appreciate the delicacy here. Now, taking away my issues for a second, as a film, it's beautiful. Stunning cinematography and a fantastic soundtrack with a moving score and wonderful performances across the board assisted by a well-written script. Kelsey Grammer especially is a standout. Seriously, I was into it, never bored, and quite moved by the power within the story. I am iffy on overly emotional experiences, especially in a corporate worship setting, because I've seen them abused. I appreciate that I legit shed tears when the salvations and baptisms occurred. Sure. Other than that one part where they kind of over sensationalized Greg Laurie's baptism a bit. I think they did it to showcase the significance of the symbolism in, in the faith. And I recognize the drama of it. But I'm also appreciative of what they were trying to do. Even if it's just a bit much into making something that it isn't. I can, I can see both arguments there. Maybe it would have worked better as a dream sequence or how him or him describing it to someone else later. Which leads me into theologically, it can be a mixed bag. It often dances on the line with prosperity before the failures of the characters kicks back in and reality is felt. Reality is often ignored for only good things happen to Christians when you become a Christian in these movies. Then you have people that are allowed to preach with no training. Okay, guest speakers, all right. But then someone is handed his own church literally as a late teen with no formal training or any kind of theological discipleship noticeable in the movie. From what I understand, this is also what happened in real life, which is also not okay, but it causes good feels because it really happened. And if it happened this way, okay. But I wish the film had taken the time to really delve into Lori's background, conversion, and arrival to having a church. Instead, as a two hour experience, it's a bit fast in that regard. We have to get him to where he's addicted to drugs, becomes a Christian really fast, and then ultimately has a church at the end. Maybe it would have been better in a mini series format, but it's moving nonetheless. And sometimes it does happen fast in real life. Other times, not this fast. Some have criticized this film for skipping over the gospel, and I can see what they mean. It would have been nice if the gospel had been illustrated a bit more clearly, explicitly, and deeply, like the how of becoming a Christian. Or maybe even in the credits from Lori, which I heard some screenings had, a gospel presentation was shown. They should have just kept that in the credits for this movie. I don't know why they didn't do that for all screenings. There was much more gospel, talks of becoming born again, what Jesus did and accomplished, and what baptism is, way more than I expected. So I think people are being harsh here because the gospel is in here. And if the movie is used by the Holy Spirit to spark interest or stir someone's heart, wonderful. If not, and it's just curiosity, it's the Christian supporting this film and their job to share the gospel. It's a wonderful conversation starter to say the least. I mentioned some character arcs being a little bit fast, especially when you think about it being in real life, but I didn't mind the emphasis on romance and some theological quibbles, some dealt with, some not. But my biggest issue came after the film. They leave out a lot more of the controversy of this movement that came to light later on. More on Chuck Smith and some questionable theology and financial decisions on his part, as well as more of what was going on with Lonnie Frisbee. A documentary released much later that detailed he would often party before preaching, had numerous affairs as a closeted homosexual, despite continuously condemning it as a sin. There is talk that Lonnie removed this from his personal testimony when preaching as he was ostracized for it, which is a whole nother conversation. It was a struggle until much later in life, until he died from AIDS. There's a lot to unpack there. This was deliberately ignored. Now, it wasn't public knowledge from my understanding, kind of an open secret until after Frisbee died, but it is now and reportedly was left out as it was said it would be too much for Christians to handle. I was told this and I need to verify that source to so take that with a grain of salt. But if that is true, 
That's a cop out. Now, coming from someone who has already told you is a Reformed Baptist, my beliefs are very much that the Bible is true and Jesus very much is real, died for our sins and rose from the dead. Like the hippies are ostracized, too often are Christians able to look past the one sin but not others. Christians need to see that homosexuality, while being a sin, is a very real and tangible struggle that many face. Some even struggle until their death like Lonnie. But that doesn't mean they can't be a believer who is actively fighting against their own sinful impulses like we all do with different sins every day, trying to say no to their sinful desires and say yes to God's design for our lives. And the potential of that impact within the story is simply cut for reasons. Furthermore, while some problems exist and erupted from this movement, many problems, theological things, and consequences I think we're seeing in cult church culture even today. Lonnie's ministry is undeniable in that many people came to faith from this movement. God absolutely used him in spite of his sin, just like so many others in scripture. God used a flawed movement, many other things, to bring people unto him. And I think that, with nuance, is worth celebrating. So Jesus Revolution is an ultimately well done Christian film with important messages and deals with some heavy themes, even if what they omit is questionable or even cowardly. Problematic occurrences after are ignored, but it is still compelling and could be a great door for someone. So I hope that it is used for that purpose. But I also think it's important to note what isn't covered and what should have been, that it's not all roses when it comes to movements like this. I give Jesus Revolution 3.5 out of five stars. If you're reading this review and you condemn it, you hate it, you loathe it, and you end up doing all of that to me and dismiss me, let me at least share this with you. John 3.16 from the Holy Scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. If you've been stirred by the film or by my words at all, or anything from the movement that you've read about. Romans 10.9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Faith in Christ alone is the only way to salvation from our sins, and God loves his people. If you've done this or are thinking about it, I encourage you to seek out a local church, pastor, elder, or maybe that Christian friend you have. You're not alone. If you know me and you're watching this, please reach out to me. I'm always willing to talk to you. I hope the Lord uses this film because God is good. And remember, to always look for the good.